10 Tips on Raising Smart Kids. Stick around. Hi, I'm Rebecca with the Parent Teacher Bridge, where you can find the ideas and resources you need to empower you to be your child's most influential teacher. And today I am talking all about 10 tips to help you raise smart children. So especially if you're one of those parents out there with a baby or a toddler or a preschooler, there's going to be tons of tips for you to take home with you and implement that are even play oriented and will help promote a better relationship between you and your child. Before we begin, be sure to click like and subscribe. And if you have any questions along the way, drop them in the comment section below. Now, I have people comment on how smart my children are all the time, and I'm not saying that to brag, but if I were to enroll my three homeschool children into a public school tomorrow, would they get straight A's? I say likely not. That would be an unfamiliar environment to them, and the way the public school grades them is not necessarily indicative of their intelligence or even how much they know. So what do I mean by smart kids? By smart kids, I'm referring to children who can speak with an adult and hold a conversation, children who have a well-developed vocabulary, children who are able to ponder what if and why questions about the world around them. Children who are good readers and they can retain what they've read. Children who are skilled at math, both in the math concepts and the fact fluency. Now, in the general population, these traits are some of the things that people think of when they think of a smart kid. Before I move on, let me just say, I wholeheartedly believe that everyone is smart in something. That is why I wanted to define what I was speaking about in this video. Every child has something that they are good at and they are talented in. And just like every adult out there, we all have strengths and weaknesses. We can feed our strengths, but we can also improve our weaknesses. So now that we've defined what I mean by smart kids, let's dig in. Number one, Talk to your baby, young child, toddler, even if they cannot speak yet. This is something that some people do naturally without even realizing that it adds to helping their child uh, become smarter. But keep in mind if you are talking about the tasks that you are doing. If you are in the kitchen cooking and you are cracking some eggs, you can just say out loud, and I know it sounds silly, and I know it sounds like you're going to talk to yourself if you've got a baby in a high chair who can't even speak yet. But talk about what you're doing. Say, okay, I'm going to crack this egg now. Number one, the first egg. Number two, the second egg. Ooh, look what I have here, a whisk. I'm going to stir the eggs. And, you know, that can be tiring to do all the time, but just do it more than what you have been doing, and your baby will get more exposure to our language. Number two is read to your child. I talk about this all the time. You probably knew that it was coming, but it can be difficult for some parents to work this in. So I highly suggest you add it to your bedtime routine, if nothing else. If your child is with you during the day, obviously it's a little bit easier. You can do it before nap time. You can do it first thing in the morning, but at least read 10 minutes a day. A lot of studies will suggest 20 minutes a day, and obviously that's better. That's twice the amount of time, but even 10 minutes is better than nothing. As you read to your child, make sure you are pointing out um, pictures and naming them and try to get your child to repeat after you, especially if your child is not talking yet. Ask questions about the pictures, even if your child is not talking yet. It's exposing your child to questions. So when you read to your child, you can uh, speak with them and familiarize them with different types of sentences, different vocabulary, and you can help them in the area of predicting and decision making. Like, should that duck swim in that water? Should that little duckling follow her mommy, you know, to the other side of the pond? 
Number three is give plenty of time for creative play and the arts. So if you have school supplies around the house, you're going to want to supervise that with the toddlers or the preschooler. So keep your scissors locked up unless you want your child to give himself a haircut. Um, But out of my three children, two out of my three have done that before. But obviously, you're worried about your child's safety as well. If you don't want to give your child a pencil, you can give your child a crayon and let them experiment. But I always had glue, scissors, construction paper, all of those things handy, even if I had to keep some of them up a little bit higher. My children knew that they could always get a crayon or a piece of paper and start coloring and drawing anytime they wanted to. If they are kept hidden away all the time, it's not as likely to happen. So if you want cleanup, I suggest that you just have a certain time period of the day that you can take out a basket with some different things like that. Sit down and color with your child. Get your child excited about it. Um, Along those lines with creativity, let your child listen to music. We had a CD player with nursery rhyme songs on it that my child listened to in bed at night or that he might listen to in the car while we were driving. Uh, We might dance to some music, watch uh, little TV shows. I remember a long time ago it was the wiggles or something. And those can get annoying for parents after so many times that they watch it but your child will learn so much from it. Don't forget, teach your child how to pretend. You can role play. You can use stuffed animals for this. Uh, You can even use Hot Wheels cars for this. And role play, act out some things like, oh, he's sad, why is he sad? Or, oh, he's so excited, why is he excited? And have them talk back and forth to one another. My daughter is the only girl in our house, but she has... Um, learned some of this from actually watching some videos online of little girls playing Barbies. It never shows the little girls' faces. It just shows their hands playing Barbies. And obviously, I supervise what she watches, but it has greatly helped her in the area of pretend play. Number four is be involved in a community. Now, you might have a community with the church you attend, with your workplace, or even with your neighborhood. But if you are involved in a community, um, your child is going to be exposed to different people of different ages and a lot more uh, diverse groups so that your child can learn how to look someone in the eye and speak to them. If someone gives them a compliment, how to look them in the eye and say, thank you. You can also teach your child uh, some stranger danger and some basic manners along the way. Number five, ask questions, then ask more. Now, if you are reading a book, that gives you a wonderful opportunity to practice asking some questions. If you go to the description below, I will leave a link for my Read Aloud Handy Helper. Maybe you're a new parent and you're wondering, how exactly do I read aloud a book? Do I just read the words only? Do I talk to my child about it? You can find all of those answers in the Read Aloud Handy Helper, and it can help you today. You can go to this link and print out the Read Aloud Handy Helper. If you are asking your child questions, you are helping them think about decisions and what they would do in a certain situation. You can also practice asking questions as you drive down the road and you observe things. Wow, why do you think that building is so tall? Or I wonder why they painted that sign like that. And point out things. Get your child in the habit of asking questions. That is what smart kids do. That is what good learners do. Number six, allow your child to experience math in the real world. So one of the first things that I did with my children regarding math is just using words like big, small, tall, short, those sort of uh, vague 
measurement words. Another thing that I did was to count objects. You can count small toys. You can count crackers. You can count cookies. So you see how you can work this into snack time and your everyday activities. Another thing that I did was in our houses with stairs. Every time I held my child's hand and I went up the flight of stairs, I would count out loud. When my child was good at counting by ones, we would count out loud counting by twos or by fives or by tens. We also did this when we were walking from our vehicle to the grocery store door. So I just worked it in my everyday activities to always be learning. You can also have your child understand math concepts by helping out in the kitchen or helping out with any home improvement projects where you might be measuring or cutting. Number seven is playing with puzzles and sorting. One of the first toys that I got my oldest child when he was a baby were, were the nesting cups. So obviously we could work in practicing the colors because the colors were there, but they nested inside each other. So we could practice sorting those by color or practice sorting those in order from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. You can also practice with some very simple baby puzzles and then work your way up. My children were always fans of small dollar store puzzles because, you know, if they got tore up, it was not a big deal to throw them out because they did not cost a lot anyway. What does puzzle working do for your child? Well, it helps your child to notice colors and patterns and noticing patterns is a huge thing one day down the road when they learn to read. So I highly recommend having your child practice that and it can also improve uh, focus and just having some patience. Number eight is give outdoor discovery time. This can be as simple as going outside in your backyard or going on a scavenger hunt at a local park. If your child is playing outdoors, they will make discoveries. Just in the last two weeks, my children have discovered not only cicada shells, but they have also, um, not shells, but exoskeletons. Uh, they have also discovered one cicada that was still alive and it was, it was about to come out. Um, they discovered a little uh, caterpillar that I was pretty sure they probably shouldn't touch because it looked like the type that would sting. So make sure you build in outdoor discovery time. It can be as simple as gathering leaves. So here are a few ideas. You can bird watch and learn to identify birds. I live in Tennessee, so my children know the state bird, the mockingbird. Um, you can also squirrel watch. My children experimented the other day by leaving out some nuts for the squirrels and just watching to see what they would do. You can find interesting bugs and look up their identification. You can plant random seeds and watch them grow. We had a pack of seeds that I bought for 50 cents and I am a horrible gardener. So my flower bed in the front of my house looked so horrible, and my daughter asked, can we plant these seeds? Can we plant these seeds? I was like, sure, go for it. You're not gonna make it look worse. And she did, and now the flowers, she has like 10 different flowers growing off this one plant, and it's almost as tall as she is. She is six years old, and what a thrill that has been for her to watch that grow. You can also rock collect leaf collect, and don't forget you can do all these things if you just take your child outside and go hiking once a week. Number nine is teach your child a standard for good decision making. For our family, that standard is the Bible. And for a lot of Americans, it is as well. But you need to have some sort of standard where your child can judge on what is right and what is wrong, uh, more so than just basing off their feelings. Everyone has different feelings. We have laws in our country that we have to follow. If your child goes to school, there will be certain rules to follow. So think about what are some general guidelines that you may go by when you are teaching your child how to make decisions and how to handle their feelings, what to do about it. And this role play that we talked about in the creativity element, um, where you can pretend with dolls or stuffed animals, you can work that into this 
part as well. But find a standard. What are you going to go by? Do you have rules in your house that your children have to abide by? Uh, do you attend a church somewhere where you can learn more about the Bible and what it says is right or wrong? Drop a comment below if you do something else. If you don't use the Bible, but you use some other method of helping your child know what is right or wrong, because we know it's not based on what is popular at the time. We can look through history and see that. Number 10 is to keep screen time minimal. And when you do have screen time, keep it learning based as much as possible. Now, I like a good Friday movie night as much as the next person. But when my children were very young, the only thing that they would watch would be something that was learning based. It might be a good quality YouTube channel that was learning based and we might watch it together on the couch or it might just be a certain um, learning show that they might get off the television or I might order a DVD for it if I didn't want to um, stream or watch TV with commercials and things of that nature. But I have some friends who don't even show their child television at all in these early years. So I would highly suggest that you keep screen time in check. Um, there's no research out there that says it really helps your child all that much, but we do know that experiences and hands-on activities will help your child grow, as well as talking to your child. Now, I'm going to leave a few links in the description below of some of the things that I did with my children uh, or that I let them watch when they were preschool and toddler age. And a lot of these things can help you teach your child alphabet and colors and months of the year and days of the week. And oftentimes it's put to music as well. So it ties in with that. Did I leave out uh, something that you would have included to help your child be a smart kid? Leave it in the comment section below. Have you checked out the parentteacherbridge.com? I have many different blog articles for you to read and share with a friend. I also have a store there where you will find some readily available um, products that you can print out and use at home with your own child. And for parents, I also have some courses that can help guide you in teaching your child some specifics. Be sure to check those out. And if I have helped you, click like and subscribe. I want to hear from you parents. So if you have a specific question, you can drop it in the comment section below, or you can write me Rebecca at theparentteacherbridge.com. Remember, you are your child's most influential teacher.